Hello guys, Nizzy here. So Baldur's Gate 3 will be releasing in a couple of weeks and as such I'd like to make a pre-release review based on the early access build that we have that's available to us using the criteria I've laid down in my other video about how to determine if an RPG game is good. Links are down in the description below. By the way, I bought this game way back in 2020 and I have a few ideas I'd like to share. So, without further delay, let's get into it. So guys, before I continue, I'd like you to please consider clicking the like and subscribe button to be notified of new RPG and Baldur's Gate content. So first, immersiveness. So this game is set in the Forgotten Realm setting, arguably one of the most expansive, the most popular, and I think the oldest setting, the oldest campaign setting in D&D. Also, this game is a third installment in an already popular and established franchise of Baldur's Gate. So the stage is set for the players to get immersed in the continuing story of Bael and his progeny. And last but not the least, this game, remember guys, this game was developed by Larian Studios who also gave us Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, if you guys have played that game, you would know that it's a very immersive game despite or maybe because of the complex systems that it has. Now, if Larian can get you to be immersed in a complex game without it having the advantage of being set in a popular D&D campaign setting, then you're sure as hell know that Larian could get you interested in a game set in one. So let's go to the combat system. First, the UI. The UI is done well enough so as not to confuse you and at a glance give you a good idea of what options are available to your character in that particular round, in that particular encounter. Also, uh, the combat system is balanced enough so as to not make it too hard nor too easy. The difficulty, of course, is determined by the difficulty you choose, difficulty setting you choose, but it is also determined by how much you're able to solve the puzzles that the that the encounter presents to you. So it rewards thinking, which is always good because in a role playing game, you'd like to, your success to be partly determined by your ability to think. Also, it the combat system provides a distinct experience uh, for each class, meaning that no two class feels the same way when they're in combat. And because that's the whole point of having different classes, right? So that they would play differently. And that uh, concept is uh, the most obvious during combat. Also, it's balanced enough that it does not give a distinct advantage to uh, characters that are focused on offense over those that are focused on defense. So both offense and defense focused characters have an equal opportunity to contribute uh, equally to the success of the encounter. Also, lastly, the combat system is, past, uh, is paced uh, fast enough for you to not get bored, but slow enough for you to be able to, again, think, since you need to do that. Uh, it gives you enough time to plan your moves ahead of time and be able to evaluate the options that are available to you, which is always a good thing. So for the progression system, now I think uh, my, my opinion about this would be limited since not all of progression is available yet in early access, but from what I've seen, I think they've hit it well enough so that your character feels like it's acquiring new powers just at the right just at the right pace uh, just frequently enough for you to not get bored with what abilities you do have but not too fast that you get overwhelmed and you get new powers before you are able to use and understand the last last one you did get so it's just you're given power just right also the progression system i think gives enough distinction, again related to combat, gives enough distinction that you have your unique identity for each character class. 
each class provides its own unique game gameplay experience as you progress, which is very important in a good progression system. Last but not the least is replayability. So this is just early access, so for all intents and purposes, your replayability here should be very limited. But even in its early access uh, form, I had lots of repl replayability uh, in, in, in it. I was able to, I enjoyed distinctively each class that uh, I was able to play that was available to me. Uh, of course, again, I wasn't, I have not yet been able to uh, have the chance to play all of the new subclasses, but the ones that I did play offered a distinct enough experience that I wanted to try each of them in turn. So I think, of course, I did not exhaust all of them, but for the cases of uh, this review, I think for the purposes of this review, I'll give a number. I think I was able to play at least uh, five distinct classes. So in its early access form, the game has already been able to give me uh, five, times to re uh, five times to play it, which is, I guess, not too bad as far as uh, early access goes. So... Uh, if you guys are still here, thank you for staying uh, until this point. And again, appreciate you dropping by and checking out the video. And see you guys on the next one.